Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Horsman, Data Evangelist with Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Seiner. Today, Bob will discuss unlocking data governance's potential through data stewardship, sponsored by Informatica and Irwin by Quest. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you would like to chat with us or chat with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, the Zoom chat defaults to send adjust the panelists but you may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. For questions, we will be collecting them by the Q&A section. To find the chat and Q&A panels, you'll see the icons for those features in the bottom middle of your screen. As always, we will send a follow-up email within a couple of business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me pass it to Nate for a word from our sponsor, Informatica. Take it away, Nate. Mark, thank you. A special thank you to Bob and all the guests uh, for being here today. Um, just a few things that I've got a few slides that I'd love to show here. So many of you probably are familiar with Informatica, but what you may not know is this is our 30th year uh, as a company. You may also not know that we were public. We went private for a short time frame. Um, we went private to create what you're seeing here on the screen, this AI powered data management solution. So it's built in the cloud for the cloud. And the idea is really to leverage AI to do data management tasks, the tedious, laborious tasks that we're all so familiar with. The idea or goal is let's automate as much of that as possible. So with that, we've got the catalog. You see all these little microservices. They're all driven by Claire, an artificial intelligence engine. So during that private phase, we had funding and built this intelligent data management cloud. I'm gonna show a little bit of the data management cloud solution here in a second. Um, these are some of the services that you get underneath each one of those. And we're gonna provide these slides uh, afterwards just to kind of give you an idea or a hint. Stewardship main topic today, definitely in that governance and privacy space, you can, you know, this is where you can list a business glossary term definition, uh, assign stewardship and accountability for, for things. The great thing about this platform is it's fully integrated. So the catalog will scan source systems like Salesforce and Snowflake, those different systems, bring that content back as metadata. So table names, column names, and then auto maps that technical metadata to business metadata. So it's automatically finding the content that's in your organization and making that available to search and find. We talk about what are some of the common challenges in data governance? Where's the data coming from? So lineage is provided in that catalog solution. You can assign stewardship and accountability. Like I mentioned, you may have a data architect. So technical stewardship and business. Uh, someone from the business hopefully is involved in that stakeholder or stewardship role. Um, it's really just to help identify good definitions for terms so there's not a confusion from one department to another on a maybe a metric or a, a definition, but it's, it's a place where you can also leverage data quality. So you can apply data quality rules automatically to that business glossary term, and then when the catalog finds technical a technical match, in a column and matches it to that business glossary term, it would automatically run that data quality rule. So it really automates a lot of that laborious, tedious task that I mentioned a little earlier. So if I just jump to spend a couple seconds here in our solution, just so you can get a, a sense of what our data governance and catalog solution looks like, you've got a business glossary, which is the ability for you to capture your business terms, definition, policies, processes, assign data quality rules to the business term. And then you've got the catalog that's going to go inventory all that technical metadata. Claire is going to do the auto association of that technical to the business. 
saving you a lot of time and hassle. You've got a you've got an opportunity to map out your business glossary here. So just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, you get an overview page where you're assigning your stakeholders. You've got a good description. You could put in aliases. If you're anything like the companies I've worked for, maybe acronyms are heavily used. You could plug those al aliases in and then you could search for those aliases and find more rich content like this to get the context that you're looking for. A lot of really good value in our solution. You know, it also does that auto profiling. So if you wanted to see, you know, how many nulls distinct, so it's automatically at the time it's scanning, it's also doing that profiling for you. So that's, that's all the time I have, but I'm going to turn it back over to Mark. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nate. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much, Nate. And, and now let me pass it over to Danny for a word from our sponsor, Irwin by Quest. Danny, your turn. Take it away. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Nate. Um, just quickly, I guess, put this up. I'm assuming you can see this. Yes, sir. Perfect. Yeah, just a quick word from uh, Irwin by Quest, and again, thanks to to Dataversity and to to Rob to, uh, for for uh, including us in this. Um, really, uh, I just wanted to quickly talk about the, what we're seeing in terms of of that sort of uh, changing landscape of data governance and uh, and data stewardship by extension. Um, you know our 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 needs around data and the the requirements that and, and objectives that we have are uh, are moving at uh, at light speed. Uh, I think we're past the hype cycle of AI, and we're actually seeing people starting to uh, fully you know uh, embrace that and start to look at ways of of safely and responsibly ad adopting that and deploying it across their organization. They're looking at new ways of getting to data pe to people in a much more prescriptive way, uh, with a lot of the the heavy lifting done already in terms of fit for use analysis and 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 fit for purpose uh, understanding, and then you know the ability to bring data from all sorts of places together uh, uh, to to really drive value for the organization, which means organizations, as always, need to up their game. So, you know, stewardship is is moving away from or not moving away, but augmenting its its primary role with reducing risk and 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 driving out understanding of the data and really packaging up that data, um, uh, you know, in, in in interesting ways with a lot of good information around it to to drive uh, usage of that data and really, you know, accelerate time to, to value creating efficiencies across uh, all aspects of the organization. Uh, data products in particular, very, very interesting to organizations, really building in that transparency and explainability into the data that's being used to garner these insights so those are, insights are trusted and, uh, and actionable uh, when they get there. So really being able to understand how folks can get that data uh, making it much more easily discoverable and reusable, understandable, uh, understanding what is the business value that this data brings to the organization, how is it related to the business, who owns it, who who's ultimately responsible for it. So again, all of this sounds like governance, but it's governance not now just for, for data as it sits across our organization, but for any data that we might be bringing in and particularly data that might be training uh, deep machine learning or, or uh, you know, uh, you know, generative type AI. Uh, so what we've done is really put together a, a process that can meet you where you are uh, in this journey uh, to really help you get to the point where you are pushing out prescriptive data that's trusted, uh, well-governed, uh, widely accessible under, you know, complete control with all of the aspects that you would need to do that. So, you know, modeling it, understanding it, understanding the bit, the business purpose, cataloging that and, and, and understanding uh, the metadata and the technical aspects of it, curating that to bring in business context, governing it, 
uh, bringing in observability around data quality and all other aspects of the data to understand if the data is where we think it should be for the purpose that we're using it, being able to score that so people can really understand what's the best data that they can use for their, their uh, purpose, and then putting it in a place where they can easily find it, shop it, compare it with other data sets, and really build a, a full data community with collaboration. Uh, to 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 enable them to to get to that finish line and to get to that value faster. So, um, really, if you want to take a look at it, uh, you know, experience uh, our data intelligence. Come and see us. We'll meet you where you are uh, in your journey towards uh, delivering this to organizations. Uh, we would love to find out how we can really help you get to where you need to be. So, with that, Mark, I think I will pass it on to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Danny. And now let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Seiner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and publisher emeritus of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob was recently awarded the DAMA Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will give the floor to my good friend, Bob, to start his presentation. Hello and welcome, Bob. Thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, I just want to make a check here that you can see my screen okay? Yes, sir. Everything is good to go. Thank you very much, Nate. Congratulations on 30 years of Informatica. That's a, that's a pretty big milestone. Thank you, Danny from Irwin by Quest for, um, for sponsoring the webinars and for participating with us today. I don't know how Shannon does it at Dataversity, but when we're talking about the topics for each month for throughout the year, it, it she has this uncanny ability to be able to have to have topics marked for certain months where they're really the topic of conversation. And a lot of the work that I'm doing with the clients that I'm working with right now, I've got clients obviously talking about data governance, talking about non-invasive data governance, but really focusing on data stewardship. So. The idea that we're going to talk about unlocking data governance's potential through stewardship, that it came up this month, is just an amazing thing. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of the things that I'm thinking about and things that I'm working on with some of the organizations that I'm working with. I'm also writing a lot of articles on, uh, on LinkedIn. So if you'd like to see more information about my thoughts on data governance, on data stewardship, um, specifically, please go visit them on LinkedIn. Just wanted to let you know that this is the 153rd episode in the Real World Data Governance webinar series. So we're getting to the point where we're rounding out our 13th year and Dataversity has me signed up for 2025 as well. So we'll be doing another, I don't know if we'll get to 200, but we're going to work our way there. But again, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to spend it with us today. I'm just going to spend a couple minutes here going through some of the things that I'm working on, some of the things related to data diversity, some of the things related to this, this webinar as well. Um, as you know, this monthly webinar series takes place on the third Thursday of the month at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, next month, we're going to be talking about executing authority and formalizing accountability. And you'll notice that you'll see those words in the webinar today, because when I define terms like governance and stewardship, I use those expressions. I talk about executing authority, although it sounds kind of forceful to some. Um, it's by the, at the end of the day, we need to execute authority and we need to formalize accountability in order for stewardship to really take hold and improve things like data quality and other things we'll talk about during the webinar today. Just wanted to let you know, um, in a couple months, I will be speaking in Washington, D.C. at the Dataversity DGIQ, Data Governance and Information Quality Conference East, to be held in Washington, D.C. This year, co-located with the AI Governance Conference and also the Women in Data Conference. So I'll be giving a couple of sessions during that event. One is a tutorial where I'm gonna share with you a little bit later in this webinar, a framework, a data governance framework that I've been working on. I'm gonna share in that tutorial how to use that, how to use that framework to, um, to effectively govern AI and data. Um, also be doing a session with a client of mine who's in the federal government space, who is in the process of 
kind of resetting their data governance council. So if you've had a data governance council for a while, a lot of organizations then take a look at it and think, how can we, how, how can we re-engage or re-energize our data governance council? That's what I'll be talking about in DC in a couple of weeks. Um, I talk about non-invasive data governance a lot. I've written a couple of books on non-invasive data governance, one called non-invasive data governance, the other one called non-invasive data governance strikes again. Um, just to let you know that I'm getting ready to submit to my publisher a non-invasive data governance unleashed book that's going to focus on mastering AI and stewardship, actually, as organizations are implementing non-invasive data governance programs. I've got a couple of learning plans available through Dataversity, um, three of them, in, in fact. Um, you can reach out to me through my consulting website, KIK Consulting. KIK stands for Knowledge is King. Um, and also in my spare time, I'm also faculty at Carnegie Mellon University in their executive ed program, in their chief data and AI officer um, executive education certificate program. There we go. Um, there's a couple of things I really want to focus on today in this webinar, because again, unlocking governance's potential through stewardship. I've written a lot of articles on stewardship. I've talked about the stewardship approach to data governance. So a lot of data governance is activities and the people that are going to be engaged are going to be the stewards. So first I'm going to do thing I'm going to do is talk about the crucial role of the stewards in a successful governance program. I'm going to then talk about something that's pretty near and dear to many organizations' heart, especially in the age of AI, is improving data quality. And how do we get the stewards engaged? And how do we empower them as guardians of data quality? I'm going to talk about fostering that culture of accountability and ownership. And you'll probably hear me mention a few times, I don't like to use the word ownership because it implies that it's somebody's personal property rather than taking care of things for the organization. Then I'm going to share with you that data governance framework that I mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago that I'll be talking about in DC. And then if there's time remaining, I want to share a couple quick stories about clients that I've worked with and how stewardship has played a real key role in their governance success. So before I get started, as I usually do, I'm just going to quickly run through some definitions. And if you've been through these webinars before or been in these webinars, you've heard them many times before. If you're new to this series, definitions are really important. In fact, when I talk about executing authority and formalizing accountability in next month's webinar, I'm really going to be doing kind of a deep dive into why it's important to have powerful and strong definitions for governance and stewardship. So like I said, I, I define governance as the execution and enforcement of authority. It makes people cringe. But the truth is, at the end of the day, the government's not coming to you and asking you to govern your data. In a lot of situations, they're demanding of you that you can demonstrate to them that you've governed your data. So you need to execute and enforce authority. It doesn't mean that you need to take a command and control approach. Certainly a non-invasive approach is one way to be able to implement effective governance. But the, at the end of the day, you need to execute and enforce authority. And you also need to formalize accountability for the data. And that's how I define data stewardship. And I'll talk about this throughout the webinar today. But a data steward is basically a person who has a relationship to the data, potentially defining, producing, and using the data. And they're being held formally accountable for how they define, produce, and use the data. So you think about all the people in your organization who are defining, producing, and using data as part of their job. If they're being held accountable for how they're defining, producing, and using data, they're stewards of the data. I often refer to the idea that everybody is a data steward and that organizations should get over that. The fact is that if you're going to hold people that have relationships to the data accountable for what they're doing with the data, they're going to be stewards. And that's truly the, the way that we're going to unlock governance's potential is through formalizing the accountability of people throughout the organization and not getting them to run for the hills every time that they hear the term data governance being used. I've got another definition just to share with you real quickly because we're talking about unlocking governance's potential. Just wanted to give a definition of what I mean by unlocking potential. It's basically empowering 
these individuals, empowering the data stewards and the teams of people that have stewards on them and teams of stewards to ex to achieve things that they may not be able to achieve otherwise. So I refer to them as extraordinary results. And by unleashing some of the capabilities, some of the strengths and things that they already have within their relationships to the data. Um, I'll, I'll mention probably a couple of times during the webinar, I'm not somebody who uh, in, who asks organizations to hire data stewards. Data stewards are people already in your organization that have a relationship to the data. And if we can get them to want to participate, want to, to them to if the, to get them to want to engage, to improve quality, if they can see the benefit from them, that's going to be truly the way that we're going to unlock their potential. And we're going to unlock the to think of data governance uh, behind a lock and key, we want to unlock that. We want to unleash that upon the organization. And the way we're going to do that is through stewardship. So the first thing to talk about really is the crucial role of stewards in governance success. So I'll talk about stewardship as accountability, as I did in the definition that I just shared with you. I want to talk about embedding stewardship within existing roles instead of creating new roles and assigning people into roles. I'll talk about that for a second here as well. Talk about the stewards as bridge builders between the business and the IT part of the organization. Oftentimes people want to know you know, who are the stewards of the organization and where do they reside? Are they in IT or in business? Well. In my opinion, a lot of times the stewards reside in the business and they need to bridge that gap between the business and the information technology and the AI governance areas of your business. And then we'll talk about long-term sustainability through implementing effective stewardship that can be maintained within an organization. So just to start out, and I'm just gonna restate the definition, kind of what I mentioned earlier, that. Data stewardship is the formalization of accountability. So if people define or produce or use data or two of those three, or maybe even all three of those things as their job, and they're being held accountable for how they're defining, producing, and using data, then just by, def by my definition, at least, they're stewards of the data. It's not something that people opt into or opt out of. It's just based on the relationship. If you use sensitive data, we're going to hold you accountable for how you're using the sensitive data. If you're defining critical data elements in the organization, we're going to work with you to help you to define your critical data elements better. We're just going to formalize existing levels of accountability that you have rather than handing it to you as something that's brand new. Like starting today, you're a data steward, but up until now, you haven't been. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute as well. So if you notice, I didn't say that we're assigning accountability. In fact, that's one word that I shy away from pretty often. I try to stick away, stay away from the word assign or even identify people as data stewards. It's nice to be identified for something, but it doesn't mean that you're necessarily necessarily going to participate in that activity. So instead of saying that we're going to identify you or that we're going to assign you, which immediately feels like it's over and above what you're doing, I use the term recognize. We're going to recognize people in the organization based on their relationship to the data Based on their relationship, they're probably already accountable. The, the truth is that they're not always formally accountable or they're not formally count, accountable enough in how they are stewarding the data that they're defining, producing, and using. So when I talk about managing data, it's basically those three activities, defining, producing, and using. I've challenged people in presentations at Dataversity events and other webinars, are there any other actions that I'm missing there? I like to keep things pretty simple, but if we can kind of, everything seems to fall under, you know, the defining action, the producing action, or the using action of data. So again, try to simplify it as you're sharing your message about who these people are who are stewards within your organization. And more and more these days, it's becoming a requirement that organizations are it's necessary for them to be able to audit who their stewards are. Do we know who's using sensitive data and are we sure that they know the policy in terms of how they can handle, how they handle, how they share that data? And again, maintain, maintaining is a key word. I had a client or a former client 
years ago actually asked me, how many data stewards are we going to need and how long are we going to need them for? I hope some of you laughed because I certainly kind of chuckled to myself and I responded to that gentleman, well, how long are you going to want to have quality data for? And he looked at me and he kind of winked or shrugged or said, okay, I get it. We're going to always need data stewards because they're always defining producing and using data across the organization. So one of the key ways to really recognize the crucial role of stewardship in governance, governance success is to embed it into their existing role. Recognize people, data stewards can be analysts, they can be programmers, they can be just business people, they can be management. I mean, anybody who is defining, producing, and using data as part of their job, the idea, instead of handing it to them as something that is brand new, which is going to feel invasive, let's just embed it in their existing role. So as I'm saying here, rather than creating a new position, stewardship can be embedded within the, the current role. We don't necessarily have to give you the title of being a data steward, but we need to know that you're a steward of the data. And even more importantly than that, you need to know that you're a steward of the data because it's gonna, that's, that's gonna be the true moment when your organization achieves great success in stewardship is when people recognize themselves as being data stewards instead of being assigned or just identified as being data stewards. So in reality, stewardship is just a natural extension of people's existing responsibilities. And the idea is if you can kind of just build it into what they do, and not make it feel like it's an additional title or that we've got new people playing in this role who don't even really know the data because we've now hired data stewards. Um, we really want to focus on embedding the stewardship within existing roles. And that's gonna be one way again, to unlock that crucial potential of data, of data governance. We're gonna do it through the stewards. We're just gonna embed it into, peop into what people do. And when, it, 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 when they no longer start questioning things because it's just naturally what they do, you've kind of won the governance game when data, is, when data responsibilities are built into what people do. Another idea of the, of the stewards being a crucial role in governance success, I mentioned it quickly earlier, that they're the ones that bridge that link between the business and IT. Now, from my experience, most often it's people in the business area who are being recognized as the data stewards. You can certainly have IT people as well that know the data. What happens with the, the business data stewards is they're often the people that liaison with IT. So we've got to get these people who are the stewards to act as bridge builders between the business and between IT. You know, speak a little bit of the, of the, the business data ease if that's a language within your organization, they know the data best. They can point to you where the where the bodies are buried. That's that's a good one for around Halloween time of the season. Um, but they know what the issues are. So build that critical link between the business and IT. And the stewards are the natural people in the organization to help to improve communication, to align governance with policies or the other way around, aligning the, the business needs with what the policies are saying we need to do. Um, again, consider your stewards to be the bridge builders for your organization because they're the ones that are tying together business and IT. And you know the, the goal of every organization I see is that we don't want to have stewards. When I had that client ask, you know, how many stewards are we going to need and how long are we going to need them for? Well, the fact is that stewards are constantly defining, producing, and using data as part of their job. And if we're going to hold them accountable, we're not just going to do it for a year or six months or during a project. You know, the government's not going to come to us and say, are you protecting your data? Are you keeping your data private? Um, you need to be able to demonstrate that you have a long-term solution that's sustainable. And certainly by integrating stewardship into your operations, that's going to almost assure that stewardship is going to be maintained and it's going to be very useful as you're unlocking the potential of data governance through the use of stewardship in your organization. All right, the second topic that I want to talk to is because this one seems to be you know, top of mind at, at many organizations, two clients that I'm working with now, um, one is 
has really taken a very viable approach to stewardship in terms of data quality, where they've defined their stewardship program first, and then the intention is to focus on using what they that that building block of the stewardship as uh, like I said, as the building block to improving quality across the organization. And they have a year long mission focused on improving quality. I was really happy that they decided to address stewardship first, because those are the people that need to be empowered, basically as the guardians of data quality. We'll talk about using the stewards proactively to, to monitor data quality, integrating them into the business operations, and then fostering a, a culture of data ownership. Um, just a couple quick notes on this whole idea of empowering these stewards as guardians. Um, one way to do that is by formalizing, and we talked about this before, formalizing data quality accountability. So if we're, uh, we're formalizing accountability for how people define, produce, and use data, we also want to formalize their accountability for participating in data quality actions. You know, it's very difficult to turn to a business unit and say, okay, we've got your stewards, now have them go improve data quality. First of all, they may not understand what the steps are that are necessary. They may not ha have the tools to be able to do that. So we need to, you know, formally help these people who are the data stewards to understand what actions they need to take in order to help to, you know, validate the data, to improve the quality of the data, to identify to what level of, of quality do we have with the data. So one of the ways of empowering stewards, stewards as, guardian, as guardians is to formalize their knowledge of the steps of things that they need to do that are data quality related. Utilize these same people, these data stewards, they're basically the eyes and the ears and I was going to say the fingers and the toes too on the data within the organization. Um, but these are the people that are that know what data is is causing them problems, that know when data is incomplete. We need to enable them just as part of their everyday actions to be looking out for data quality issues, for proactively reporting them, right? you know, empowering them to say something if they see something before something takes place that's going to disrupt the operations of the organization. And, you know, if we can work with them and help them to understand where they can embed quality checks in their workflows that they're naturally doing already, that's going to help them to, in, to proactively monitor the quality of the data. Um, data quality, again, I think this is really important, so it's worth repeating, is that data quality needs to become part of your natural business process. It's not something that, okay, we're gonna build a data warehouse and then we're going to go in and improve the quality on that warehouse, or we're gonna integrate two systems into one, or we're gonna transform from one system into the next. And then once we've done that, we're going to improve our data quality. No, it's, it's probably better to be proactive and kind of build that into your business process. I have a client right now that's, moving from one application to another. And they had to do it very quickly and data governance didn't really get involved until late, but they're at a point where they're now going and doing data quality checks on data in the target system, instead of cleaning up that data, improving the quality of the data as it was moving from the source to the target. So we wanna in integrate data quality practices within our business operations instead of just having people think of it as just an added activity that comes at the end. Because if you use it as an added activity, you're gonna to need to justify why are you improving the quality? What's the problem with the quality? And then you can expect the question of, why didn't we address this when we had a chance to do that? Fostering a culture of data ownership is another way to empower your, student, your stewards as guardians of data quality. Now, I, I said earlier that I shy away from using the term ownership, but I'm gonna kind of use it anyway in this, in this meaning, because um, I've added the word sense of ownership in front of it. So people aren't gonna take their job seriously, or they're not gonna take their stewardship role serious, seriously, unless there's a, a sense of why this is necessary. 
why they feel like they're a little bit empowered. So they do need to own um, need to own the activities that they're doing, not necessarily data ownership in terms of identifying or even recognizing who is the singular department or person that is the owner of the data. They're typically, that doesn't exist in most organizations. It's more of somebody who is a steward who by definition of steward, and you can look it up in the dictionary, a steward is somebody who takes care of something for somebody else. But the stewards need to care. They need to feel like they own part of the responsibility. So we need to focus, we need to foster that culture of ownership within the organization. Um, and it's not, again, not just that they own specific assets, they own the accountabilities that come along with being recognized as a data steward. And that kind of leads directly into the next topic. We've already talked about the importance of the role. We talked about in involving stewards in data quality activities. Now let's spend a couple minutes talking about the culture of accountability and ownership. Um, we need to encourage this accountability across teams. And in a couple minutes here, I'm going to share with you my framework, and then I'm going to focus on both the operational and the tactical levels of the organization. The tactical, at least in the, the framework that I use, really is across functional boundaries in the organization. So we got to get stewards to foster or to, to be involved in a culture of accountability and ownership of the data, but we've got to do it instead of doing it in silos, doing it as more of an enterprise function and following either a federated or a distributed or a centralized, whatever approach you take to governance, we still need to do it across teams. It can't be just siloed. Building the ownership through stewardship. Let me just jump into these slides because it looks like we're going to run out of time very quickly. And I want to make certain we have time for um, Danny and Nate to chime in on some of the questions we get at the end here. So encouraging data accountability across teams. I mentioned that before. We've got to get people on the teams to understand who the stewards are, what their role is in, um, in, in improving quality, improving privacy, improving um, security of the data. So encourage data accountability across the teams. Again, embedding it into people's roles rather than making it feel like it's something that's brand new to them. Think about whether that will work in your organization and if people will accept that versus being assigned to be data stewards. So building ownership, and again, I'm talking about the ownership in terms of their sense of ownership, meaning they're making them more invested in the integrity, security, utility of the data, helping them to understand where the improvements in the quality of the data are not only going to help the organization, but it's going to help to make them more efficient and effective as well. Creating the clear lines, you know, certainly recognizing clear ownership and stewardship. Again, I I can't I can't recommend more or in a stronger way using the term recognize rather than using the term assign people as data stewards. Because again, I don't know how you feel, but I know when I'm assigned something, I immediately feel like I'm going to be looking for where am I going to have the time to do the things that stewards do, rather than helping them to understand that they're already defining, producing, and using data, and we want to help them to do that better within the organization. Sustainability, you know, get the stewards engaged. If we're looking to unlock the potential of governance, you know, if the stewards have been tagged and they and people have told them that they're data stewards and they attend a meeting once a week or or whatever it is, or re maybe regular meetings within a project schedule, it's not as engaging as giving them opportunities to provide feedback, provide metrics to help understand things that will keep them engaged in the efforts. So regular feedback helps them to stay proactive, not only in maintaining quality, but any other level of governance you're trying to apply. And certainly if you stay non-invasive in the approach, you're going to encourage them to continue to communicate with your data governance team, with your data governance directors, with the program, rather than just having them sitting out there as stewards and not being engaged and not actively involved in the program itself. So this is a real important topic that I wanted to spend uh, at least a few minutes on. 
where we talk about um, integrating stewards into your data governance framework. I don't know if most organizations have frameworks. I do want to share with you the framework that I've been working on, that I'm using, that there will actually be a course available through the Data Diversity Training Center on how to, to implement the framework I'm going to share with you here in a minute. But we need to make certain that the stewards are a big part of that framework. Um, let me just jump in and share the framework with you. You may have seen this in prior webinars that I've done. I know it looks very similar to the Zachman framework for enterprise architecture, where John would talk about the who, what, why, where, when, and how of the organization across the top and the different perspectives of people uh, in the organization down the left-hand side. I've kind of followed John's idea um, for what his framework looks like. And I've found the six most core components of a successful governance program. And I've had people ask me, you know, can we add a seventh? Can we eliminate one? Actually, when I developed this initially, there was no data column. So I figure we need to know what data is important at the executive level. We need to know what data is important at the operational level. And that's basically how you read this. We need to know the processes that the executives get involved in or the strategic group gets involved in. We need to know how to communicate with these people at the different levels of the organization. We need to know what metrics are important to them so they can see the value of being stewards, the value of governance in general for the organization. And we should also know the tools that are gonna be specifically of interest, like a tool of an executive level, maybe a policy or a directive. A tool at a tactical or operational level may be a data catalog tool. Be some of the tools that uh, that Danny and Nate talked about at the beginning of this webinar. But what I really want to focus in on here is these two rows, because this is really where the stewardship takes place in the organization. So we've got tactical stewards who are business subject area or domain data stewards that look at data across business function. And then we've got people within each specific business function themselves who are the operational data stewards. They're not necessarily making decisions with the data or about the data that are going to impact other business units. So we need to recognize that there's not only operational stewards, the tactical stewards play an extremely important role in unlocking our governance potential. That's where most of the activity in organizations take place is at the tactical and the operational level, certainly at the strategic level where you've got your council and your executive level where you've got your executive steering group, they're all important. But in terms of stewardship, we need to know what data is important at the tactical level, what, what data is important at the operational level, the processes at each of these. Again, I just think it's a, a very valuable way to look at what all is necessary when we're implementing a formal governance program. And then we're really focusing in here on the tactical role and the operational role of the data stewards. Again, the tactical being cross business function and the operational being specific within a business function. Well, what I find is the tactical role is much more difficult to recognize within the organization. We know who are defining, producing, and using data at the operational level. We can document that. But who are the people that are at the tactical level who are looking at that same data, but looking at it across business function? All right, I've got 10 more slides and I've got six minutes. So I'm going to go before we try to turn this over for some questions. I do want to talk about integrating the stewards into the framework. And then I also want to talk, um, just share a couple of quick examples with you as to where stewardship has really added value within organizations that I've worked with. So you've seen some of these things before, embedding stewardship into the existing roles. Instead of Instead of creating new roles, instead of hiring people to be data stewards, instead of assigning people or even just assigning that Joe over there is a steward of the data, we need to recognize them. There's a positive connotation that comes along with being recognized for something. Now, even more importantly, if we can get them to recognize themselves as data stewards, feel a sense of ownership in terms of the things that they're doing as stewards, 
you're going to have much greater success in unlocking data governance potential in your organization. So we want to we want to embed stewardship into existing roles. We want to integrate it into existing responsibilities wherever possible. I've seen organizations add a line or two in the job descriptions of just generally everybody that they're going to be held accountable for how they define, produce, and use data. So basically, potentially everybody is a steward of the data within the organization. Um, we need to make certain that we explain the expectations of stewards. We can't just tag them on the shoulder, tell them they're a data steward, assign them to be a data steward, then leave them alone. We need to be very clear with them as to what their roles and responsibilities are, but also what's expected of them. People aren't looking for additional jobs. They have day jobs. To be a data steward, initially it's going to feel to them like it's something that's over and above. It's a second day job. What we want to do is work with them to understand and, and set the uh, proper expectations that that's not, it's not a second day job. You've been recognized as a steward because of your relationship to the data. And we find that you're going to be an important piece of overall governance and stewardship of data across the organization. You know, get stewards to work together, get them to work cross-function. That's specifically what I talked about at the tactical level within the framework that I just shared. It's across departments. It's not just individually within silos. If we're defining customer, instead of defining it for the 150th time, let's look to see what definitions we already have. Are there definitions that are being shared across different business function areas within the organization? Um, across function, across department is extremely important for integrating stewardship into the framework. Continuous improvement, like I said, keep the line of communications open with your stewards, use your stewards and their knowledge, create communities of interest around the stewards so that they can share ideas amongst each other, but they can also be, again, your eyes and ears, your fingers and toes into the data that can help you as the data governance practitioners to truly understand what issues people are having at the operational and the tactical level within your organization. And so now I have three minutes left, so I'll just bear with me as I quickly go through just a couple quick, I don't know if I'd call them case studies, but some examples of where stewardship has played a big role in governance success in organizations. So I'm going to talk about driving quality improvement, cross-departmental success, talk about regulatory compliance, and then just an organization that was really looking to transform their culture into more of a stewardship culture. So the first one, this is a federal government agency that is data quality is driving everything that they do. I'm, or everything that they will be doing as they've been establishing their data strategy and their data governance approach and data management directive and those types of things. So we they, they know that, they, that this is where they want to focus, but they needed to focus first on recognizing and getting the people who are stewards to recognize themselves as being data stewards. Because now we can start to engage those people, get them actively, proactively involved in assessing the quality of the data, targeting specific actions at improving the quality of the data. In another organization, um, they, they were focusing on cross-departmental success, and they still are focusing on this. They Stewards were a very much a big part of their original data governance plans, and so they're using the stewards' knowledge to kind of, as I mentioned earlier, bridge that gap between the business units and IT to build cross-departmental stewards and people who are looking at data now as an asset that crosses business function rather than specific to a business function. If they didn't have the stewards to engage with this, they'd be picking people out of the blue. Here, they're recognizing people based on their relationships to the data. So again, cross-departmental success has been through stewardship because they've used the approach that I mentioned here, which is recognize people for what they do. Don't come and hit them on the head with a hammer and say, hey, now you're a data steward. Start doing this additional data steward stuff. I did work for an, another federal organization that was focusing on compliance. They had received something from the government which was an MRA. I don't know if you're familiar with an MRA being a matter requiring attention. And when you receive an MRA, you respond to that. 
So they knew that they needed to be able to demonstrate to the government that the data that they were using that was sensitive, that shouldn't be shared, wasn't being shared. And they needed to be able to demonstrate that they had stewards who knew the role, the rules, are you LES, and, and have been educated on what these rules mean and how the data is classified. So they understood how they could use that data effectively. Again, they unlocked their governance potential through the people in the organization who had their hands on the data, who were the stewards. And the last example I wanted to share with you is an organization that I'm not even sure that they really even called it data governance. Their whole program was data stewardship. It was a large manufacturing company. And what they did was they looked to, they, they knew what data governance was. It, it was that the term meant something specific. Governance meant some, something specific to that organization. They couldn't use the term governance. So it became a stewardship program. And so what they did was they focused on transforming the culture through the stewardship. I know I didn't get a chance to go through each and every one of the bullets, but you'll get copies of these slides. You'll get copies of the recordings. And if you have any questions in terms of any of the details that I didn't get to talking about on the slides today, make sure you reach out to me either through Dataversity or, or uh, directly to myself. What are the things that we talked about today? We talked about the roles. We talked about the quality and the stewards as the guardians. We talked about fostering a culture of accountability and then building stewardship into the day-to-day -day governance framework that you have within the organization. And then I shared a couple of quick anecdotes about stories of organizations have who have taken stewardship to, taken it very seriously, and it has really helped to unlock the potential of their governance program. And with that, Mark, I am turning it back to you to see if we have any questions. There's a lot of uh, electricity in chat right now. Chat is uh, <laughs> is being very, uh, very active. So thank you, everybody, for, for sending us messages. I don't think they're all to everybody, but uh, huh. yeah, there's lots of lots of neat commentary there. Um, and actually, I'm going to ask a question from chat because I'm interested in everybody's take on it. Uh, how can we effectively transition organizations towards implementing best practices that ensure data quality at the source? Currently, we rely on numerous data quality checks that consume significant time and resources, often involving extensive teams over several weeks. What strategies and processes can we adopt to further to foster this critical shift? That's a book. That's a. Book. It is a book. I love that question. <laughs> So that's, I had to ask it as soon well, as I I'd saw this. I'd so love good. to hear Danny and, and, and Nate's opinion on this, but I will say that it, it's going to be expensive. It's going If you're going to address data quality at the source, it's going to require, number one, that, that the, if the source already exists, that you're going to need to clean up that source. You're going to need to make certain that it's quality in the first place so that you can maintain that quality moving forward. And to me, what that tells me is that you've got to define standards You've got to know what data is good and what data is not good by definition before you can actually start addressing data quality problems at the source. So I think it's it's a, a good goal that a lot of organizations have. That's the best place to clean up the data. I don't know, uh, Danny, Nate, you have any comments on that? I know you do. Yeah. I, so, uh, you know, the, the problem is, is that you can't impact outcomes without focusing on the process. And the problem with fixing it at the source is a lot of times those data entry clerks have to enter something to get to the next screen. And so it's already entered, right? You, The only way you can really impact that is by changing the standards, right? So one of the things that I did when I stood up my data governance program was I profiled the data because a lot of times those system owners, and I'm, I'm putting air quotes around system owners, right? They're the ones that own responsibility for those data entry clerks, right? So when I would profile their source and to show them how bad it was, a lot of times they thought their data was good. They thought that the processes were good. When I profiled it and revealed the truth, that changed the dynamic, right? They they were awestruck most of the time, thinking, "I didn't realize it was that bad. It must have it must have gotten that bad before I got here." <laughs> um, 
but they were immediately they wanted to focus on well how do we get this better and can you profile it again next week because I'm going to have a meeting with my data clerks right so honestly I, I feel like back to that statement right it's you've got to focus on if you want better outcomes you have to focus on the process Yeah, I'm, this is Danny. Uh, I, I I agree with Nate there in terms of of fully understanding that. Um, you know, I think what a lot of organizations and and Nate Nate kind of hit it on the head. They don't even realize <clears throat> the poor quality of the data that they're producing, um, and 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 you know, being able to address that at the source is really to understand the impact and 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 then start to understand what it is that that's poor about that data so the ability to measure it you know through profiling and constantly looking at that in terms of you know is that you know is that indicator going up or down because you know you're not going to be able to boil the ocean uh so so i think a, a, a key piece of that is to understand what is the data that has the most impact? Where is poor quality really putting us, um, uh, you know, or, or getting us in trouble from a, a, a strategic and tactical perspective? And then be able to go back and, and understand the process and understand the systems that are there. Um, and then try to start to, to do what you can to, to fix that. A lot of organizations are, are looking at that. Uh, as part of a modernization program as well. So, um, you know, part and parcel is, is you know, the, the level of quality of the data is driving uh, how they're going to manage that data in the long term. Um, so, so looking at that, but, but truly understanding what the impact of, of those quality problems are allows you to start to prioritize and then start to to figure out you know which rabbit holes you need to go down to find out where those problems are occurring because you know data quality can occur uh, problems can occur at the source data quality can also occur from you know too much manipulation through the process of getting it to the consumer um, and and you know and, and basically watering down the data. Uh, for that. So again, the problems can come from a number of different sources, but understanding what's the priority and then understanding, uh, as Nate said, the process that got us those problems uh, is your starting point for then, you know, uh, mitigating that and remediating uh, those problems, whether they're systematic, whether they're, you know, uh, people just doing things out of habit in order to, as, as Nate says, to get to that next screen. It's interesting. Somebody posted in the chat that this could be a topic for a complete webinar. I think we could yeah, do that. I think so. <laughs> I was going to say that to you, Bob. <laughs> um, there's so many ways we could go with Q&A, but uh, I have a couple of questions that I see in here, and, and I, I really kind of want everybody to address this one topic um, because it's talking about the interplay between IT and data stewardship and what their role is. Um, so... Uh, Maybe I could just ask it like that. Like, what is IT's role? Like, uh, IT aren't really stewards. Everybody's a steward. I get that. But <laughs> like, what is IT's role? And are they like, are they owners? Are they stewards? What do they do? Like, what what is IT's well, role? Well, I'll, I'll answer the quick and then let it I'll turn it over to these dents as well. But um, what is IT's role? IT knows things about the data that the business people don't know like how the data is in the systems, how the data is being manipulated a lot of times. Um, the business people know things about the data that the IT people don't know. It can't be an us versus them. It's got to be a, we've got to be working together because mm -hmm. IT has its specific role, but its role is to make certain that the data is being delivered, that it's digestible, that it's available to people versus the people in business who are the ones that are using it to make business decisions. That's my quick, my quick take. I think they need to have a close relationship. Amen, pastor. <laughs> I, here, you know, here's, here, so I'll just say that it's data is a life cycle. It comes into your organization, usually from those store systems, but a lot of us move that data. And when I say us, there's ITs involved in moving the data from that source to a data warehouse, right? And so in my mind, the second that we move it from the source system to another location, you've now got another steward that's involved. So I don't, 
I think of it as you, you follow the life cycle and as many hands are touching it, those are also data stewards. So I agree with Bob, you, you have to, IT has to be involved in this just as much as the business. Mm -hmm. Parting thoughts, Danny? Sure, sure. Um, the one thing I will say is is that, uh, you know, I agree that, that IT has a role in there and are stewards of the data. They have a perspective, but at the end of the day, they're, they're truly the service provider to the business. So uh, the one cautionary tale I'll, I'll say is I think we've taken a long time and listen, I'm an old IT guy. So, and I'm an old uh, IT data guy. Uh, and that data was mine uh, when uh, I was in that role many moons ago. Um, I think we've done a good job of understanding and 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 putting, you know, driving home that understanding that that it's not IT's data, that it's the business's data. So I think that that it's it's all about building relationships. It's about collaboration, about listening to each other. Um, but it's got to be driven from the business. IT is there to respond and to uh, consult. Uh, there are very, you know, uh, you know, germane points that they can bring to the conversation. But uh, we've spent a lot of time getting away from managing data in a way because that's how IT manages data. Um, and, and we don't want to go back there. So we just have to be very careful about that. Uh, it takes a village. Uh, we just need to know who the village elders are. And at the end of the day, uh, the decisions that we make need to be dri driven out of the 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 business because that's the reason the data is there in the first place. I'll give you an amen on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. And, uh, and that's all we have time for for today. So thanks for the wonderful conversation. Thank you, Chap, for being so energetic and uh, and being so active in Q&A. And, and uh, please come next time. We'll have a recording and slides out within a couple of business days. Thanks again. And everybody have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Nate. You guys are great. Thanks, everybody.